Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a video that I'm honestly kind of surprised that I haven't done before. I've been on booktube for a whole three years now and I have never done a video talking about my favorite books of all time. Honestly, I kind of feel like I just kept putting this video off because I never felt like my list was complete. But the thing is, I don't think my list will literally ever feel complete. So I figure why not do this video now and then in a couple of years I can kind of look back on this one and then hopefully make a new one that's full of even more favorite books. So let's just get into talking about the books. I do have 11 books slash series that I want to talk about. Also I certainly do not have these ranked. I just didn't have it in me to rank these books and I feel like they all serve very different purposes in my life so I didn't want to kind of go from like 10 all the way to my number one because honestly I don't know what my number one is anymore but instead I decided I wanted to talk about these in the order in which I read them. So I'm going to be starting with the books that I read the longest time ago and we're gonna work our way up to the more recent favorites. So let us start with the first book which I read in September of 2020 I believe so it's been like three and a half years. Can't even start thinking about that. <laughs> but the first book that I have on this list is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. This was my very first V.E. Schwab book that I ever read and it started my obsession with reading through almost her entire backlist. I believe there is maybe one series by her that I haven't read and I also have not read her newest release in the Shades of Magic series yet. But aside from that, I went through a whole phase in like the end of 2020 where I was reading everything she had. And I was having such a good time. She was one of my favorite authors for so long. I feel like I haven't read anything by her recently that I've absolutely adored in the way that I've loved these so I don't know if I would consider her a favorite author now but her books were definitely an integral part in beginning my adult fantasy kind of journey and it was so much fun. I look back on those times so fondly because I just had so many books ahead of me to read but this is just the one that I got to first and it has remained my favorite. I also reread this book last August for a video that I was doing for my Patreon and it did confirm that I absolutely adore this book. Honestly I think this is V.E. Schwab's best work. I just think the plot and the characters and just the general concept of this book are so top tier. I love them so much. So basically this book is following our two main characters, Victor and Eli, who used to be college roommates. And for their college thesis project, they decide to look into EOs, which are extraordinaries, which are basically normal people that have somehow developed superpowers. And Eli and Victor are kind of looking into why this happens. They're trying to see if they can maybe recreate that. And it kind of goes from there. I absolutely love the dynamic between Victor and Eli. I feel like that's definitely what kind of carries this story. They're such interesting characters and they're really good foils to one another because Eli is very much like the good guy in this scenario and Victor definitely kind of acts like a villain in this scenario but as you progress throughout the book you kind of see that that's not exactly true. Both of them are actually extremely morally gray and just seeing how their dynamic develops over the course of this book and the hatred that they end up developing for one another is just so well written. They have such good tension in this book as well and it's just so much fun. I must say though I don't really like Vengeful which is the second book in this duology and I know that's not an unpopular opinion. I know a lot of people don't really enjoy that book as much as they enjoyed this one and I agree but this one is, is so good and I will definitely be doing a reread of this many times in the future. Next up I want to talk about a series that I started in March of 2021 and I have been slowly slowly reading it over the last three years and that is The Stormlight Archive by Brandon Sanderson. When I picked The Way of Kings up I had no clue who Brandon Sanderson was, what the Cosmere was, how many books this man put out per year. I had no clue. I just, <laughs> I just saw that The Way of Kings was like over a thousand pages and I was like, that sounds like a fun challenge. Maybe I'll try reading that one. And by the time that I was done with it, I just fell so in love with this world, with these characters, with the concepts that Brandon Sanderson was bringing to these pages. This series is just so, so good. And normally I don't recommend people start with The Way of Kings if you want to get into the Cosmere. But honestly, I do think it is his best series in the Cosmere, which again, I don't think is an unpopular opinion, but like, it's just... I love it so much. If you guys don't know, this is a very, very epic high fantasy series. It is currently a series of four books, but I believe it is slated to be 10 books long and they are all like over a thousand pages. But honestly, I love the fact that this series is going to be so long because I adore the characters that we are following in this series. I love the magic system. I love the world building that is present in this series as well. It's all just so well done. I would try to explain the plot to you guys, but honestly, I don't have half an hour to do that. But the way that these characters develop over the course of the series is so well done and the things that they're going through are really harrowing in some places, but they're also really exciting in some places. I feel like this series definitely 
directly takes me through the full range of emotions. Because especially with Kaladin, he struggles with his mental health throughout the entirety of this series. So you definitely see him in a lot of low points and you yourself really feel for him in those times. But then you also see the characters at these really high points when really exciting things are happening that you can't help but just get so hyped about. And there are very few series that are able to pull such strong emotions from me, but honestly, I feel like you can't help but just get into it. And I feel like there are a million other things I could say about Stormlight, but you've probably heard them already because a lot of people love Stormlight, but I just adore this series so much. And I'm really hoping I can maybe do a reread of it before the fifth one comes out. Wind and Truth, which is the fifth book in this series, comes out in December. But I haven't read The Way of Kings in three years. And I'm really strongly contemplating and doing a reread of at least The Way of Kings and Words of Radiance. These are also my two favorites in the series, so like I wouldn't be mad about that. But then I also feel like I need to reread Oathbringer and Rhythm of War, even though I just read them. But like, I don't know. I don't know. That's something for me to figure out. I'll think about it later. But for now, just know that I love these books. I love these characters. Pick the series up, please. Then we have another series that I picked up in March of 2021, and that is Heartstopper by Alice Oseman. I'm sure you guys know at this point, but this is a graphic novel series that is following Nick and Charlie, who are just two boys falling in love. <laughs> it is so cute, so wholesome. I am honestly at my happiest when I am rereading Heartstopper. I believe I've reread it three times at this point. I love the graphic novels. I also love the TV show. It's so, so good. And I just love how heartwarming this series is while also dealing with rather serious topics like mental health. And I just feel like Alice Oseman gets it. Like everybody loves Heartstopper. You shouldn't be surprised that this is on this list. I'm sure a lot of you also would consider Heartstopper to be one of your favorites. It's just so lovely. <laughs> then we have the series that I'm sure you have all been waiting for because I never shut up about this series. And this series I read for the first time in June of 2021. This series quickly catapulted its way into my top favorite spot. I don't know if I would consider it to be my number one favorite anymore, which feels like blasphemy now that I'm saying it. <laughs> but I've read so many good books since and I still love these books, but there are just some other good ones. I don't know. I don't know. See, this is why I didn't order this list because I figured it would be way too hard to try and deliberate between which is like actually my number one. So it's not worth it but um, you all know what it is. We're gonna be talking about The Infernal Devices by Cassandra Clare. Never have I been so enraptured by a series so quickly. I love The Infernal Devices. I actually started reading this series directly after I had finished all six books in the Mortal Instruments series in a week. So maybe my expectations were just so low coming off of that series that when I picked up this series, I was like, oh. Hold on, Cassandra Clare's kind of doing something here. This is a historical fantasy series that is set in London in the Victorian times. This is definitely where my love of historical fantasy originated. Like, I know it's from this series. There's no question about that. And this is following our main character, Tessa Gray, who is coming over from America to ostensibly meet her brother, Nate. He is not there. Uh, she ends up getting taken by these two old witch ladies and is being somewhat tortured and used for this power of shapeshifting that she never knew she had. Until one day she gets saved by probably everybody's favorite shadow hunter, Will Herondale, and he takes her back to the London Institute where all of the shadow hunters of London live, basically. And she meets my favorite shadow hunter, Jem Carstairs, love him so much, and things kind of, you know, go from there. I like, this is the one series, this is like the only series when somebody asks me like, why do you like this? I'm just like, dude, I don't even know. Like just, I, I can't talk about it. I, this is just a series that I hold so near and dear to my heart. I feel like it is honestly a part of me at this point. I love the characters. I love the plot. I love the general atmosphere of this story. And it's just, it's so good. So you guys have not read The Infernal Devices, please do me a favor and pick it up. So many people absolutely love it. Obviously myself included. Hopefully you also love it. If you don't love it, please don't tell me. I don't want to know. Next up we have a book that I read for the first time in October of 2021, I believe, and I have reread this book twice since. I have reread it every spooky season since I first read it, and that is obviously The X-Hex by Aaron Sterling. Now, I know what you're thinking. I know so many people hate, so maybe hate's a strong word. So many people dislike this book immensely. And I wanna say I get it, but like, I don't. Do you not wanna have fun? Do you not wanna have a good time? Do you not enjoy a witchy rom-com? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? Like, obviously I don't actually mean that. 
but I do mean it a little bit because I just fell in love with the X hacks when I first read it. It's just a really good time. And as somebody who loves Halloween and October, it was honestly just meant to be a book that I was absolutely going to adore. But basically this book is following our main character Vivi who is a witch and in the beginning of this book you kind of see her, I believe she's in college at the time, she has this boyfriend whose name is Reese Penhollow and one morning he kind of drops the bomb that he is actually engaged to somebody else back in Wales. Vivi is obviously really not okay with this and she's like get out of my house and go back to Wales. <laughs> and then later that night she is hanging out with her cousin Gwen and they're like what if we hex him? They're like, no, 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 we shouldn't, we shouldn't. But what if we did? <laughs> so then there is a time jump to nine years later when Reese is for some reason back in town and bad things seem to be happening to him. So Vivi starts to get the, uh, the inkling that, oh, maybe that hex might have actually worked. But this is honestly just such a fun, spooky rom-com. I love the town that this takes place in because it's a small town in Georgia that is very like Halloween-centric. There's so many fall festivities that take place during the course of this book. And there's also this college that Vivi works at that has very gothic architecture. So I love the descriptions of that as well. But also I just love the romance so much. Reese is just such a solid love interest. And I feel like him and Vivi have really good chemistry. They definitely have really good banter as well. So it's really fun to read. This is now just a book that is synonymous with October and Halloween in my mind, so honestly you will see me rereading this book this year and for many years to come in September or October because I can't not do it at this point. Then next up we have a book that I picked up for the first time in August of 2022 and that is Strange the Dreamer by Elaine Taylor. I have yet to do a reread of this book but I really really am hoping I can do a reread soon and for some certain reasons Mayhaps I will be. But I feel like this is a book that really helped me to understand my reading taste because this is a very whimsical and magical, at times confusing kind of story. And it helped me realize that I love books like that. And I feel like it kind of helped me going forward so I could be on the lookout for books that people kind of used those buzzwords for. And I think this was kind of a, a turning point in my reading almost. That sounds really dramatic, but I feel like it was. But this is a book that is following our main character, Laszlo Strange, who has been obsessed for his entire life with the idea of this lost city called Weep, until one day he actually gets the opportunity to go there. I absolutely adore her writing style so much. It's very purple prose. It's very lyrical. Some people really dislike it for the writing style. But again, I feel like this really helped me to understand that I love writing styles like that. And maybe it does seem a bit superfluous at points. It's a bit wordy, but I just feel like the atmosphere that she's able to create with the way that she writes is just unparalleled. I loved it. And I just love the whimsy of this book, honestly. We all know how I feel about the whimsy. I love a good whimsical story. There's this very specific chapter that I have very vivid memories of reading. It's called Shopping for a Moon, where Laszlo and our other main character... What is her name? Her name is Sarai. I think I'm... I really need to do a reread, guys. But him and Sarai are out and about and weep and they run across this shop that is selling like little bracelets or necklaces or whatever, just pieces of jewelry that actually have tiny real moons on them. And something about that concept, I immediately like latched onto it. I was like, this is so good. What a concept. And like from that moment forward, I was absolutely obsessed with the book. So if you want something whimsical and magical, but also kind of heartbreaking in moments, I do believe you could really enjoy this. Then the next book that I want to talk about is a series that I started February of 2023. So about a year year ago at this point, and that is obviously the Veronica Speedwell series. You guys knew it was coming. This is definitely a series that's very different from the other books that are on this list because for the most part the rest of these are fantasy. And this is a historical mystery slash kind of romance series, and that just shows you that it's that good. That a normal fantasy reader like myself is obsessed with this non-fantasy thing. But basically this is an, an ongoing mystery series that takes place in Victorian London. It is following our main character Veronica, who is a lepidopterist, which is somebody that studies butterflies, who ends up teaming up with our other main character Stoker, who I believe is a taxidermist, and they end up just kind of going around London solving mysteries. And the main thing that really makes this series so good is the characters. The mysteries are fine. Some of them I do really enjoy. Some of them I do think are absolute duds. I'm looking at you, an unexpected peril. I can't 
I can't get into that book right now. The rest of them are good though. But the characters are really what sells this series for me. I love Veronica so much. She very much pushes against the social standards that were in place for women at that time. She's very much about women doing whatever the hell they want, which is obviously something I can always support. So Veronica is definitely a very strong and determined character and I love her so much for that. And then we also have our other main character, Stoker or Rebel Stoke Templeton Bane. But I also just love over the course of the series how much you can see he cares for Veronica and the people in his life and it's just they're just such good characters and they have such a good romance. It's a slow burn romance which is I love a good slow burn romance. Like honestly yes tell me that they don't kiss until like the sixth book and I'm sold. Please. I also think the series has really phenomenal side characters. I love it when they just like pop in and out of all of the books and you get to see more of them and I feel like they're really well fleshed out and they always have just a really fun dynamic with Veronica and Stoker. But this series is so much fun. If you guys want to know, even though you probably already know the fourth book, A Dangerous Collaboration is my absolute favorite, but I also really like the seventh book and the most recent one, A Grave Robbery. This one's so spooky, so gruesome at times. It's so good and I cannot wait for the rest of the books that are gonna be in this series because it's not over, thankfully. We're, get, we're gonna get a 10th book. It might be coming out in like 2026, but there's at least gonna be another one. Next up is a manga series that I started in March of 2023, I believe. We all know what it is. Say it with me now. It's Yona of the Dawn. I'm sure anybody that normally watches this channel, you already, you already know. I literally talked about this series relentlessly last year because I read 40 volumes of it last year. Because initially I read the first volume, I wasn't 100% sold, but then I decided, you know, maybe instead of reading it, I'll watch the anime instead. So I watched the anime. I was absolutely hooked and then I found out there was only one season of the anime. But then I decided to make it my mission to read every single volume of this manga that was out. And I did that in about a span of like four months. So if that gives you any indication as to how much I love and adore this series, it's a lot. But basically this is kind of an action adventure, historical romance situation. Basically you are following our main character Yona who initially is a princess of her kingdom until one day some things start to go down and she has to flee her kingdom with her bodyguard. Ha. As they are on the run they meet some friends. It's amazing found family. I love all of like the main characters that we are following so so much and their group dynamic is just so entertaining. But also the romance between Yona and Hawk is absolutely stunning. Absolutely so slow burn. We are 40 volumes into the series and hardly anything has happened. But I'm living for it. Like when I tell you I love, I love a slow burn, that's what I mean. Although honestly, if the slow burn slow burns any longer, I'm gonna be kind of salty about it. But it's just so good. It's so much fun. If you guys are looking for a new manga series to start, I highly recommend. Honestly, I don't think the series gets very good until like the fourth or fifth volume. So keep that in mind. But once you get into it, it's so good. Then next I want to talk about a book that I read last June, I believe, and that is obviously Half a Soul by Olivia Atwater. This is another book that I harped on relentlessly last year and I'm so so sorry. <laughs> Basically this is another historical fantasy book. You guys can probably tell that I love historical fantasy, seeing as like 50% of the books on this list or historical fantasy. <laughs> but this book is following our main character Dora who when she was younger gets half of her soul taken by a fairy which basically means that she doesn't feel emotions in the same way that a lot of people do. She doesn't really have strong reactions to things. She doesn't really feel pain or embarrassment and seeing as this is set in kind of a time period that mimics the regency period where strict social norms for women were very abundant that definitely gets her into a lot of sticky situations until she goes to London for the season to find a husband and she ends up running into our other main character Elias Wilder? who is a very kind of outspoken and moody magician who is very used to people having very severe reactions to the things that he says and does but when Dora doesn't really have those normal reactions, he's very intrigued. So they end up kind of working together. He's kind of helping her figure out what happened to her and she ends up helping him out in return and their romance is just so cute. This has become my go-to recommendation for people. Like when anybody asks me, what book should I read? I'm like, you should, this one. You should read this one, please do it. And now I really wanna reread this book as well. This video is literally only making me want to reread all of these books when I have so many books on my TBR that I need to read instead. 
it's not good, but it is the truth of the matter. Moving swiftly along, the next one that I want to talk about is a book that I read last December, and that is The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I actually read The Night Circus last year as well, and I really, really enjoyed that one. Erin Morgenstern's writing style is absolutely unparalleled, so I knew that I needed to pick up The Starless Sea as soon as possible, and I figured because it was a very wintry book, it would be perfect to pick up in December. So I read it, and literally from page, like, 10. I knew I was gonna give this book a five star and I knew it was gonna become a favorite book of all time because honestly, how could it not? I feel like this is a book that very much is a good representation of what my current reading taste is. And I feel like that is whimsical, almost nonsensical stories with really descriptive and atmospheric writing styles. This book is following our main character, Zachary, who one day is strolling through his university library and he picks up this book from the shelves and he just feels this need to take it home and read it. But as he is reading one of the stories, he realizes that this is a story from his childhood that he has never told anybody before. So obviously he goes back to the library and he tries to figure out any information about this book. He talks to one of the librarians about it and it turns out that that book was a donation to the library but they don't really know much about it aside from that and they can't find any information on it. So naturally Zachary starts to obsess over why this book is in this library, how do they know the story, who did this book come from, and it kind of unfolds from there. The structure of this book is really interesting because you are following Zachary and his whole adventure that he goes on throughout the story, but also in between the normal narrative that you're getting, you are getting the stories that are in the book that he picked up from the library. They're just like plopped in here. And at first you don't understand what these are, why they're in here, how do these all connect, but as the story progresses you start to put more and more things together and I feel like it's that coming together of all of these things that you were so confused by at first that is so satisfying and it was so fun because every time something would get connected I would go back and like reread the story that's in the book and everything would start to make sense, everything would click into place and it was just so much fun. One of the other main reasons that I really love this book is the fact that this is a book about books. Like this entire book is literally just an ode to stories, how they change over time, how they impact us as people, and obviously as a very avid reader that is something that very much speaks to me and it is something that would speak to a lot of people when they pick up this book which is probably a reason a lot of other people really enjoy this as well. And the discussion of the importance of storytelling that is present throughout the entirety of this book paired with Erin Morgenstern's beautiful writing style just led to something that made me feel like this book was absolutely made for me. Like those are just the best books and this is one of the only books that's truly made me feel this way. Obviously a lot of these books I absolutely love, but there have only been a couple of books that have truly made me feel the way that The Starless Sea had, and that's just a really special feeling. So this book is absolutely one that I will be rereading time and time again. I already can't wait to do a reread because I just loved it so much. I was just enraptured from like page one, so it is just beautiful. And then the last book that I want to talk about is actually a series that I did start in the beginning of 2023. However, I read my favorite book in the series in February? I think. And that is the Emily Wilde series by Heather Fawcett. I really liked the first one, but I don't think the first one was an absolute favorite. But then I read Emily Wilde's Map of the Otherlands, and this book absolutely took my breath away. It 100% cemented the series as a favorite series of all time. This series is just... Let me ju let me tell you what it's about. Okay, so this book is following our main character Emily Wilde who is a Cambridge professor that studies fairies and in the first book you are following her as she goes to this small town in northern Europe, I believe, to study the folk that live there. And Emily is a very like socially awkward quiet person. I very much commiserate with her in that regard, but while she's in this small town she kind of acts a little bit standoffish towards the people that live there, so in return they act kind of standoffish to her, so it's not really going that well to begin with. But then her department rival, Wendell Bambleby, shows up and he is a very charismatic and charming guy, so he kind of inserts himself into the situation and helps Emily out with the research that she's doing. The story is just so full of magic and whimsy, and I'm sorry I've probably said the word whimsy so many times, but like... I just, I just love whimsy, what can I say? But this just has so many different elements that I absolutely love. The romance between Emily and Wendell is so cute and their dynamic is so fun because it's very much like grumpy sunshine, Emily being the grumpy one 
and Wendell being like the very like flamboyant out there kind of guy and I feel like it's normally reversed when people use that trope so I really like that this turns it on its head a bit. I also love the depiction of the folk in this series because they're very scary and I love it when authors have a very scary depiction of fairies because that's very true to what they are like in folklore but seeing Emily interact with them is just so fun. She definitely has some bad experiences but there are also really good experiences that she has with the folk that are really cute and it's just so charming. I love Emily, I love Bumblebee, I love their dynamic, I just love everything about this story and I cannot wait for the third one which I think is coming out early next year and I just know it's gonna be so so good. So we have now arrived at the end of the video. Those are all of my favorite books that I have ever read. Honestly, I have loved making this video. It's been so fun to go through just so many books that I absolutely love and adore. I am just so, so thankful that these books have found their way into my life. They have absolutely brought me so much joy over the past couple of years. I am going to let you guys go. Actually, before we go, I feel like this video definitely begs the question, what are some of your guys' favorite books of all time? Please let me know down in the comments. I would love to read through them. Also, before we go, I would like to thank everybody over on my Patreon. If you are ever looking for more content from me, that is always linked down below so you can check it out if you would like to. But with that, I'm going to let you guys go. So I hope you are all having an amazing Monday or whatever day it is that you are watching this video and I will see you all in my next one.